What is up? Just finished the workout. It's super hot. I had to change my shirt. I'm so sweaty. But uh, in this one, I quickly want to go through uh, 10, I guess, tips and just from questions that I've gotten. So on TikTok, if you follow me there, um, a lot of the players I, or the people that follow me are middle schoolers. And that's what I've noticed just easily. They want tips for, you know, sixth, seventh, eighth graders. Obviously, there's some high school kids there too. But I feel like, again, a lot of the information that's out there is always addressed to you know, high level high school players for the most part, or how do I go D1, you know? What about the advice for the younger kids who, you know, are just either getting into the game of basketball or wanna know how they can better themselves but aren't at that advanced level yet? So this video is for you guys, middle school players who, you know, whether you're the best player on your team or not, this is gonna help you guys, you know, in terms of planning for the future um, and realizing what you can be doing right now to get yourself to where you wanna be. So there's 10 things that I'm gonna discuss. Again, I'm gonna try and keep it short. I am very long-winded when I speak, so I apologize if I kind of rant a little bit, but I know you guys enjoyed the last Q&A, so this one's just gonna be dedicated to uh, middle school basketball players. So the first question that I consistently get all the time is, how do I find an AAU basketball team? I think the team that you join in middle school, so for example, the team that I joined in seventh grade was not the team that I was on by my junior or my senior year, right? Um, that team, I grew out of that team, right? It, it was a great first experience for me, but by the time I got to high school, I needed to join a more competitive league. So that is really, really important for you guys to remember. Get on a team as early as you can in middle school, but always be looking to you know improve and to challenge yourself more. So if you're on a team right now and you're the best player on the team, you're not really going to any you know big tournaments. Again, you're only in middle school, so don't stress it too much. But always be looking to uh, you know challenge yourself to play against the best competition possible. So the first question that I get all the time is in regards to AAU basketball, how to find a team, do I need to play AAU, all that kind of stuff. So for the first thing I'm gonna say is for middle schoolers, I do recommend that you start to look for a travel team, whether it's AAU or not, just a travel league, something that's a little bit more competitive maybe than your school team or you know your local like church league, right? So this is gonna be a team obviously that travels to different towns, maybe even different states. Um, I know when I played uh, AAU basketball, I started in I think seventh grade and we traveled just around like the New England area and it was a really, really good start. So I highly recommend uh, ask around, ask your friends, um, and just look up teams, local travel teams in your area that you can join. And don't worry, again, if you're not the best player on the team, don't worry about that now. You're only in middle school, you're gonna keep getting better, and the fact that you're playing with better people around you is gonna make you better, I promise you that. So don't be afraid to get on a travel team, even if you, think, you don't think you're really, really that good. And another piece of advice is the complete opposite. If you're the best player on that travel team, you know, by the time you get to eighth, ninth grade, you wanna be going to other teams. You don't necessarily wanna stay on the same AAU team for six years. For me, I started off on one team and then I kinda of outgrew it. I needed somewhere that was more of a challenge for me where we were gonna get more exposure and go to more, uh, more, different, more tournaments in different states further away. So the team that I started out on wasn't the team that I finished on. Always be looking to, you know, push the level, push the level of competition that's around you, join teams with more competitive players, more competitive tournaments so that you're really getting better and improving yourself as opposed to just staying the same, staying complacent. So that's my tips for AAU basketball. And if you're not playing AAU right now in sixth or seventh grade, don't stress it too much. But I would start looking around uh, for a team if you really, really love the sport because it is a lot of money too. Two, tips for tryouts. So tryouts, we'll go, since we just talked about AAU, we'll go tips for tryouts for your middle school team. Uh, my biggest piece of advice is to just try and be yourself be self-aware of what you're good at. Are you a great rebounder? Are you a great shooter? What are you really, really good at and what can separate you uh, from the rest of the kids in your grade, right? You've been playing with these kids probably for a couple years now. You know who's the best player on offense, who does this well, right? But what can you do that those other kids can't do? And that's what you have to show up at tryouts. And then again, the two things that always, always matter is respect, right? You better be respectful for the coach. Don't be talking while the coach is talking. Don't be looking down, you know, have make eye contact be respectful, and then obviously be a good teammate when you're out there. You know, even if you're not having a great day at tryouts, make sure that everyone in that gym thinks that you're a good teammate, thinks you're a good kid, and that you're always doing the right thing. Don't let your body language ruin your tryout for the whole week just because you didn't play well on one day. 
next one, uh, building confidence. So this is another one that I get a lot of younger players, you know, who maybe they don't feel like they're that good or, again, they're intimidated by kids that are better than them. Building confidence is through your work ethic. It doesn't, this answer doesn't change no matter how old you are. If you're in seventh grade or if you're in a senior in high school to a senior in college, building confidence is all about repetitions. The more you do something, the more confidence you get in anything in life, not just basketball. So if you've been sitting on your couch playing Fortnite for the last three months and you have tryouts next week and you're nervous, yeah, like you probably should be nervous, right? I would be nervous if I were you too because I haven't done anything to prepare myself. The more prepared you are, it's like going into a test. If you know you, if you know you put in work studying for two weeks straight, right? You're gonna feel way better going into that test if you than if you didn't study at all and now the night before you're scrambling, right? So it's just about being prepared and then again, just believing in yourself. A lot of younger kids struggle with this. Believe in yourself. Don't try, don't get nervous, right? When you're shooting, try and just always focus on that shot's going in, that shot's going in. You gotta be putting positive messages into your head as opposed to tearing yourself down. Um, and stop comparing yourself. We'll talk about that one in a little bit though. Number four, how to get recruited. Just, just stop. Don't ask this question if you are in middle school about getting recruited. You don't need to be worrying about that right now. First of all, most of you need to figure out whether basketball is really something that you love or are you just playing it because all your friends are playing it um, and you know you see it on TV and you think you have to play basketball or your parents are forcing you. Figure out if you really enjoy it or not because the recruiting process is, if you don't love basketball, it's not worth playing college basketball. It's not worth worrying about getting recruited. At this point in your career, sixth, seventh, eighth grade, you should just be enjoying it and trying to get better each and every day. Uh, number five, I'm trying to go quickly here, guys. A workout routine. So I've been getting asked a lot, like, how much time do I need to be, sh how many shots do I need to put up a day, or how much time do I need to be spending working out? This varies for everybody. Again, it depends on your priorities, right? Like, I don't know that many middle schoolers that have a job, but if you're working or, you know, you're at school all day, there's only so many hours in the day. But again, if it's important to you, you will make time for it. So maybe instead of coming home and getting on the Xbox, right, or getting on the computer, you do an hour out Side every single day or 30 minutes even so I don't think that there's like a set time that I can give you in terms of like the perfect formula for a workout routine but for me when I was in school I remember I always uh, shot around when I got home from school at night I wasn't really the one to wake up super early before school that's that's Kobe level and that's why I wasn't great and Kobe was great because he was getting up you know five in the morning to go play basketball but I was always making sure that I got in shots if I didn't have practice obviously when you're during season you have practice and stuff but when it was the off season, every night I was outside. It wasn't like I was you know, going hard every single night, but I got my shots up and I got my work in every night when I got home from school. So you just gotta figure out something that works for you. In the summer, you have a lot more time. So I think that instead of you know putting yourself through a really, really tough workout every single day by yourself, how about you go call up your friend next door who has the same goals as you, who loves basketball, and you guys go to the park and play one-on-one. -on -one. That to me, playing one-on-one, -on -one, playing pickup is almost just as good as getting, getting in an individual workout. There's a time and a place for both, but there's nothing like game-like experience. So the more you can just play naturally within the, you know, in the course of your day, the easier it's gonna be and you're not gonna feel like, oh, I have to go work out now because you just played for an hour with your friends at the park and that's fun, right? So the more you can do that and along with obviously just getting in reps and working on the stuff you need to work on, uh, you know, at a, with, within reason, you don't have to be outside for five hours a day. That's ridiculous. You don't need to be making 5,000 shots a day. If you wanna do it, do it. It's not gonna hurt you, but there is a certain point where it's diminishing returns and if you're just over training and overworking yourself, it's really not gonna help you. So it is personal preference, take everything with a grain of salt, but I would just highly recommend finding a way to just naturally get basketball in throughout the day, whether it's with a friend at a park, at your, on your team, or just having a set time that you're going to go out in the backyard and shoot. But uh, number six, what should you work on? So this kind of just goes right, right, uh, right along with it. For me, middle school players, there's three basic things that I think that every player needs before you can get to high school and you know consider yourself to be good or really, really good. You need to have good footwork, which is just the basics, fundamentals, guys. You need to be able to keep your feet down and not travel. That's the biggest thing with younger players is they're always traveling. So work on your footwork, keeping your pivots down, playing off your, your dominant pivot foot. Uh, number two is going to be be able to finish with both hands. So I don't want to see, you know, obviously there's certain situations where you could shoot a right hand layup on the left side. I don't think that that's wrong at all, but you have to have the ability 
the ability to shoot the ball with both hands around the basket and finish layups with both hands um, in and around the paint. Number three, I think shooting form and some sort of ball handling. You got to be able to dribble a little bit. Even if you're a post player, you got to make sure that you're able to bring the ball up the floor every now and again. You don't have to be, you know, crossover between the leg combo moves like a guard, but you have to be able to dribble a little bit and you got to have some sort of jump shot. A lot of players, if they get into bad habits at an early age with shooting, they're really, really hard to break and then they end up in high school being the kid that can't really shoot. So it's you're really easy to guard because everyone just kind of sags off of you. So work on your shooting form, work on your footwork and work on your finishing. Those are my three big things. So number seven, this goes right into it. Smaller players, advice for smaller players. My biggest piece of advice is number one, get over the fact that you're small. Especially, you know, right now you're in middle school, you're gonna grow. Stop thinking that you're gonna be small for the rest of your life. Some of you, yeah, you might be, but you need to stop focusing on the fact that you're just smaller than everybody else. So the second thing would be to make sure that you have a floater and a runner in your package. So you gotta be able to shoot the ball high over bigger defenders using a floater or a runner as opposed to just bugs everywhere, Jesus as opposed to just uh, getting to the rim. Because the older you get, the better the level of competition that, are, that there is. You're going to get blocked at the rim. If you, can't, if you can't get the ball high off the glass or high over a defender's hand, it's going to be really tough to finish as a smaller guard. But for middle schoolers, again, don't dwell on the fact that you're small. You're probably going to grow. You haven't hit your growth spurt yet. Um, but again, be able to shoot. Have a good handle. If you're small, you got to have a good handle. And then also think about what can separate you. A lot of smaller players, this might be stereotypical, but a lot of smaller players are faster. So if you can use your speed to be you know, a menace on defense, somebody that can guard anybody who can race up and down the floor and get easy baskets, do that. What can separate you even as a smaller player? Number eight would be to stop comparing yourself. We talked about this earlier. Stop comparing yourself to the, the kid next to you on the bench, to your best friend, right? Everybody's at different stages right now. Again, some of you are going to grow. You're probably going to grow. So just because you're shorter than the kid next to you now doesn't mean that you're not going to be taller than him in three years, right? So stop comparing yourself because you're nowhere near your end point right now. If you're in seventh grade, you know how much better you're going to get by 10th grade? So yeah, stop worrying about other people. Don't worry about who's better than you, who's worse than you. Worry about what you can do in the present moment to improve your game and get better each and every time that you take the floor. Don't compare yourself. It's only going to drive you crazy if you're thinking about, oh, this kid scored this many points. I got to do this too, right? Worry about what you can do in the moment and how you can get better each and every day. Number nine, we're almost done here, guys. We're going to master the basics. We already talked about that. But master the basics. Don't go and do the fancy stuff first. All the jelly finishes and the 10 combo moves in a row, you don't need that right away. Of course, I think it's great and there's a time and a place and great players are able to do all that stuff, right? Great players. But you're in middle school. You need to get the basics down. If you can't make a regular floater or a runner or a pull-up jump shot without traveling and you want to be Euro stepping all over the floor, right? Like the coach is gonna bench you. A lot of people, just because you're showing fancy stuff and you know you can do all the cool 360 alley oop layups, that's not gonna help you necessarily in a game right away. A coach would rather see someone with great fundamentals first, right? Has the basics down, and then you start challenging yourself with uh, you know fancy moves and all that kind of stuff. But again, you gotta master the basics first. Keep it simple. Don't try and do too much. Get everything down, fundamentally sound, have good shooting form, be able to handle the ball a little bit, and then also work on your basketball IQ. Are you smart on the court? Are you a good leader? Do you know time and score? Work on the basketball IQ piece at a young age. An early age, it's gonna make a huge difference for you. And then number 10, this probably is my most important one. I don't know why I left it for last, but it's don't box yourself in and try not to let your coaches box yourself in. Now that's easier said than done. You can't really control what your coaches do a lot of times. But again, even if you don't agree with their decisions, always respect your coaches because once you get into the habit of just being a respectful player, it's gonna carry you, you know, really, really far and your coaches are always going to have good relationships with you but don't box yourself in don't just you know just because your your post just because your coach is playing you in the post doesn't mean that you have to be a post player right you have to make sure that you're working on other skills as well I don't want you standing in the paint every single day in practice and then when you go and work out on your own you're also just standing in the paint you have to start expanding your repertoire expanding your skill set so that you're able to play other positions you know in the future so if you're a post player you should be shooting threes if you're a post player you should be handling the ball if you're a point guard you should be playing in the post a little bit and again 
not necessarily in games or in practice, right? Whatever your coach asks you to do, you should do. But when you're on your own time, you should be working on, you know, perfecting those skills so that you have them when you're called upon. Or, you know, if you're the small guard now, but in three years you grow another five or six inches and you end up being a small forward, now you have those skills already. It's not like you're out of position because, oh, I grew up playing a point guard, so I never, I never learned how to be a post player. So that's huge. You've got to make sure that you're not boxing yourself in to the best of your ability. But uh, those were 10 pieces of advice that I have for you guys, 10 tips in terms of the most commonly asked questions that I've gotten from middle school basketball players. So that was a quick one, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Drop questions down below. I like doing these style of videos because I can kind of just get on here and talk. And make sure you check out my podcast, too. If you don't have time to just sit here and watch a video, but you have time to listen to one, whether you're working out or whatever, I'm going to be transcribing all this stuff um, into an audio format and putting it on the podcast. So it's called the Backyard Buckets Podcast. It's on Spotify. It's on Apple, uh, iTunes Podcast podcast whatever that is but uh thank you guys so much for all your support we're growing here love making these videos and helping you guys out in any way that i can be sure to hit the like button subscribe to the channel see you in the next one